Okay, great. Thank you for coming everybody to this afternoon's meeting. So everyone knows this is being video recorded. Uh, present this afternoon are myself, Natasha Yakovlev and Helen Kahn. Um, is there any public comment this afternoon? And if you could just use the hand yes. raising feature and the chair will call on you. Okay, I don't see names on some people. If, if someone who wants to speak, if you could raise your hand. I think Fabio has his hand up. Okay, Fabio, do you wanna start? Sure. Okay, if you could just state your name and a, Anna, do we need addresses for public comment? Okay, just your yeah. name for the record, please. Um, honorable commissioners, my name is Fabio Delorto and I live across the street from JJ's. The commission made clear since this spring over many meetings that it was not your intention to create a new outdoor entertainment venue in Florence, and for good reasons. This location is in direct proximity to residential houses with direct line of sight allowing sound to travel unimpeded to my property and others. Despite this, JJ's now is requesting to modify their license to have weekly amplified music and wants to start the process to schedule the performance lineup for next year because, and I quote, this kind of scheduling takes months and months ahead of time to plan, so I may provide consistency of a weekly performance. This will be an outdoor entertainment venue right in, front, right in front of my and other neighbors' backyard with concerts every week. With the request for amendment, JJ submitted a petition supporting outdoor amplified music. I support amplified music as well, as long as it is not detrimental to those outside the premises. I'm sure that JJ's passion would be enjoying an outdoor music concert they voluntarily chose to attend. However, I could not decide not to go to a concert every weekend and just relax in my own house at dinner time. That decision would be taken away from me. Having weekly amplified music concert held right behind my property does not give me any choice but to avoid enjoying my own yard and being forced to tuck myself, my wife, and my young son into our house, window closed, even on odd days, every single weekend. That is not fair. My comment is not about stopping the dining outdoors, that is fine and reasonable. This is not about stopping indoor amplified music that is a minor impact to the neighborhoods and JJ's currently provided. This is not stopping about outdoor, uh, stopping, uh, outdoor music as JJ's can provide non-amplified music with lesser impact to the neighborhood. This is not about stopping all amplified music ever. JJ holds a yearly Oktoberfest concert and it's fine because it's a frequent special event. As an next door neighbor, even if I am affected by the Oktoberfest event, I have not complained about it because that was the civil and moral thing to do for supporting our local businesses. For example, I love Florence Night Out, but I would be rather disturbed by having the same live music played on the sidewalk behind my house every week. If this license amendment is awarded by the commission, my property and other neighbors would sound like that every weekend. To take into account the inherent problem of constant loud music in our neighborhood, during the July meeting, the commission gave a choice to JJS whether they prefer a substantially reduced frequency of amplified music events or more unamplified music. Mr. Norman chose to have unamplified music once weekly from May 1st to October 1st as currently licensed. But now he's trying to have his cake and eat it too uh, by instating weekly amplified music concerts. This was already deemed inappropriate by the commission. And it is not fair to those residents that are directly affected by this concert without any option to enjoy peaceful weekends, but having to leave our own houses. I hope the commission does not grant this license amendment since it will severely infringe on my right of quiet enjoyment of my own property. As a final note, one of the comments in JJ's petition literally says, take their houses down, exclamation point. I do not know if it's a personal attack to me or my neighbors, but it surely shows the respect of the local community. Thank you very much for your time and service to the city. Um, I should have mentioned before Fabio spoke, just for a matter of record, we recently um, decided to, to adopt a three minute limit for each person's public comment. So if the next person would like to raise their hand, um, E. Orfman, hi. You're Thank muted. You. Okay. Hi, I'm Elisa Foreman. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I reside at 33 Kai Street in Florence. It's about a block from JJ's. Um, I won't belabor the point as I'm sure the commission is well aware of the issues from last summer. 
Um, but throughout 2000 and the beginning of 2001, uh, the level, the volume of JJ's Tavern definitely interfered with our ability of use and enjoyment of our property here. It was so loud we couldn't eat on the deck and back of our house without being drowned out by the music. I would also point out that there were numerous attempts to um, work with the owner of JJ's Haven Tavern to kindly turn down the volume, and that was unsuccessful. So I would like to ask that the commission please deny this request for amplified music. Um, at such point as JJ switched over to acoustic music outdoors, I will say that that was not at all problematic. Um, I think that that was certainly um, audible to everyone in the seating area and wasn't bothersome, at least as far away as I am at this point. Thank you. So, thank you for your time. Thanks. Is there anyone else here for public comment? No, Annie, you have an email? I do, yes, thank you. Um, it is from Roger Clark. Uh, Julie and Roger Clark, excuse me, um, and he stated, I am away and just found out Monday night that the License Commission will meet again to vote on whether to grant a permit to JJ's to have amplified music. I'm busy at four, so I can't zoom in. I do not support the request and feel that amplified music is not necessary. All that needs to happen is unplug the amplifier. It is such a small area that the guests will certainly be entertained and the neighborhood will be very great. Thank you. Any other public comment before we move on? Okay, we're going to move on then to agenda item number three, the application for a transfer of common Victor license, transfer from Belly of the Beast Incorporated, transfer, transfer to Wine Witch LLC. Is there somebody here who can represent this transfer? Yes, uh, I can, David Greenman. Hi, I'm a half owner. Hi, thank you for, for indulging us. Of course. Thank you for indulging us with business downtown. That's wonderful. Let's hope. Uh, can you let us know a little bit about what's happening? Uh, yes, we are in the, <laughs> excuse me. We're in the midst of uh, going through a lot of paperwork. Uh, we're planning on opening uh, a little bit up to you when we apply for a liquor, excuse me, a wine and malt transfer next month um, that's going to kind of determine when we open mm -hmm. uh, assuming that it, it, we get our paperwork together correctly and that you grant it uh, so that is our plan it's, uh, it's you know same restaurant it was in terms of seating and uh, anything else uh, you know no equipment changes but nothing of that sort okay. and is this going to be someplace that has It'll have the same type of service, go up to the counter and order? No, we're going to do table service. Um, so that is a little bit different, I guess. Yeah. And lunch and dinner? That's, that's the plan. Great. Uh, Helen, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I don't. It sounds pretty straightforward. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a transfer of common victrola license from Belly of the Beast to Wine Witch LLC. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you very much and good luck. We look forward to, um, to the reopening. Thank you. We look forward to seeing all of you there at Thanks. one point or other. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Public hearing on an application for transfer of liquor license and change of location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license. Transfer from the Olive Juice Company Incorporated DBA Bistro Le Gras 25 West Street. Transfer to Highbrow Incorporated DBA Highbrow Woodfire Kitchen and Bar 12 Crafts Ave. Proposed manager, Andrew Brow. Um, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody here for public comment for this agenda item? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Brad Schimmel. I, I represent Andrew Brow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just like to say that uh, his restaurant, uh, Highbrow Woodfired Kitchen and Bar, 
is looking to uh, basically expand its liquor license. It has, currently has wine, beer, and cordials. He's looking to have uh, all alcohol. Uh, that's the really the only change. The the seating uh, in the restaurant, the configuration of the restaurant would remain the same. Uh, basically, it's just adding the the full bar, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's really the change that uh, Mr. Brow is seeking. And uh, he's been in business now for a while, as you may be aware, and uh, he's doing well and thinks that this would be a good addition to his business. Great, thank you. Um, anybody else? Then I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Um, I have no. I have no items to discuss regarding this, Helen. Do you? No, no, I don't. I think it's been. It sounds like it's been a long time coming. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yes, we're very, very happy to see this. <laughs> Great. Um, then I will make a. And do, Annie, do I need to reopen the public hearing to make a motion to approve it? Okay. Nope. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for transfer of license and change of location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license from Bistro Le Gras to Highbrow Wood Fire Kitchen and Bar. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you so Thank you much. To, Thank you to the members of the commission. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on then to item number five, continued from the September 1st, 2021 meeting, public hearing on an application for alteration of premises on an annual all alcohol restaurant license for Notch 8 Incorporated, DBA, Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Platform Bar, The Deck at 125 Pleasant Street. And this is an application to add 4,180 square feet of outdoor space. Um, and is somebody here at the moment? No, he's not here. Okay. So do we need to um, have a, mo a formal motion to deny yep. the application? Yep. And, um, okay. So Helen, as, as you see in the commissioner's agenda, there's an issue with the lease of the parking lot and the space that needs to be sorted out between right. the and the and Notch 8. Um, so for that reason, I will make a motion to deny. Can I hang on just point of order or whatever? I am. No, it says that is this a public hearing? Do we need to be opening and closing public? Oh gosh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just looking on the agenda and seeing. I that. just read that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we need to do that first, right? And then and then jump. Okay. <laughs> yes, Annie. We have to have a public formal public hearing portion if he's not here and. Um, actually, no, because it wasn't advertised as such. It's, it's just a continuation from last time because the public, the public comment portion happened at last meeting. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Then right. as you were, Natasha, I'm sorry. Okay, moving on, I will make a motion then to deny the application for the alteration of premises on an annual all alcohol restaurant license for Notch 8 Incorporated. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Okay. Agenda item number six, application for short-term liquor licenses for Building 8 Brewing, location Florence Congregational Church, 130 Pine Street. Uh, this is for a wine and malt license on November 6th and 7th from 6 to 9 p.m. and November 18th from 6.30 to 11 p.m. Is anybody here for that agenda oh, item? I don't see O'Brien. However, um, the next agenda item is for artifacts and they're actually, I think they're doing the events. I don't, they're not doing them together, but it's, I think they're the same events mm -hmm. just on different dates. I don't know if maybe you wanna take number seven first and then- Give him a minute. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So moving on to agenda item number seven, the application for short-term liquor licenses for artifact 
LLC, DBA, Artifact Cider Project um, at Florence Congregational Church, 130 Pine Street for November 12th and 13th, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. and November 14th, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. And this is for a wine and malt license. And I see Jake is here. Yep, hi. Hi there. Um, Cassandra is also here. Cassandra is um, here representing the church and she knows more about the actual event detail. So depending on your question, um, okay. yeah, that well, makes sense for her Great, I think to hear from Cassandra first then since this is a new venue, which is very exciting. Sure. Yeah, we're <clears throat> we're delighted to be opening up. Um, so um, this weekend, we hope to be able to serve uh, cider and beer for the first time. Our grand opening was last weekend. We had about 200 guests in attendance. We have renovated the sanctuary space at the Florence Congregational Church to create a stage for live performance, music, dance, theater, all of that. Um, and we're excited to fold in our partners to serve refreshments at intermission and at receptions after the show. Um, most of our shows are starting at 6 or 7 p.m. Sorry, not 6 or 7. Um, performances are 7 and 8 p.m. with doors opening, you know, typically between 6 and 7. Um, and we're, you know, typically we're done um, like around 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we're having, you know, between one to three, sort of averaging about two, two events a week. Um, obviously, you know, starting with live music, but we'll also be having um, gallery talks and, you know, other types of gatherings as well. Um, there are two separate spaces. There's the sanctuary itself where the, the programming is taking place. And then there's a parish hall, which, you know, comfortably, you know, would hold 150 people standing. Um, and that's where we'll be serving, um, serving refreshments you know, beverages, as well as some snacks, non-alcoholic options, of course. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions for Cassandra about? No, I don't. Congratulations. It sounds great. Yeah, thank you. I hope we see you all here soon. It's like, we're just, we're just getting our feet under us, but it's really exciting and the space feels really good. And the response has been very positive so far. Sure. And then moving on to Jake, do you want to tell us a little bit how you plan to set up? Yeah, sure. Um, it's pretty simple. We're just going to have cans um, of cider uh, and we'll also be selling um, building a beer and customers can get a 16 ounce pour or an eight ounce pour. We'll be IDing customers um, before serving them. And um, I think Cassandra mentioned this, but they'll be staying within the parish hall. So they won't be able to like, you know, leave that room to like bring drinks back to the, um, to the main room. Okay, sounds good. Helen, do you have questions? I do not. All right. Um, do you want to make a motion? Uh, yes, I'll make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor licenses uh, for Artifact uh, Cider Project as detailed in item seven of the agenda. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Um, so Brian's still not here. So we'll move on to item number eight. Request to amend previously approved short-term liquor license for the drawing board brewing company, LLC. This amendment is a date and time change to November 6, 2021 from one to 10 PM because your event was rained out. Is Corey, yeah, there you are. Hi, Corey. Hey, so yeah, nothing has changed specifically other than the date and time. Okay. Sounds good to me. Helen? I'm ready to make a motion. All right, go for it. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the request to amend the previously approved short-term liquor license for Drawing Board Brewing Company, LLC. I second. And Natasha? Helen? Yes. Helen? Yes. Thanks, Helen. Courtney. Um, Thank you very much. I just maybe um, before we get into number nine, I um, just suggest taking the new business application. Sure. Oh, there it is. Okay, definitely. Um, then moving on to item 13, the application for short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music Incorporated 274 Main Street 
for November 17th, 2021, 6.30 to 11 for Warren Miller's Winter Starts Now event. And this is a wine and malt license and they've requested a fee waiver. Is someone here from the Academy? Hi. Hi, I'm Melissa Cleary, I'm the theater manager. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. This is the usual? It's the usual. Okay. Yep. Helen, do you have any questions? I don't. No, I don't. Motion. <laughs> then I will uh, make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license, as well as the requested fee waiver for the Academy of Music as outlined in item 13. Thank Second. you. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And Helen? Yes. Natasha? Yes. Okay, so moving on, um, we have agenda item nine and 10. I would like to invert those items and take 10 first and have a discussion about uh, decibel level limits and entertainment licenses before we move on to a request to amend the license. Are you okay with that, Helen? Yes, yeah, that makes sense. Great, so then Item number nine is now the discussion of entertainment decibel level limits and entertainment license guidelines. Um, Annie, thank you for doing the research that you've done to um, just sort of gather some anecdotal evidence of what other communities are doing um, around their entertainment licenses and any issues or that come up with noise and restrictions and things like that. Um, obviously like this past year has been unprecedented in terms of the number of outdoor entertainment licenses that have been requested of us. And um, obviously establishments want to continue to have them but we have had some issues with noise complaints in not just in Florence but also downtown. So I think that we need to establish the guidelines in order to move forward and not be relying on our best judgment, which is completely insufficient where this is concerned. Um, in reading the, some of the guidelines that other communities are using, I was, one question I had was who created these guidelines? Was this a town board, city council? Do you know, Annie, who? Um, I would say it was um, a little bit of both, definitely with the, the advisement of um, town council. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, but, and then the, the boards all have to sign off on it. Um, but no, I mean, I don't know where it originated. Okay. Um, you know, we, as we know, we have a noise ordinance on the books for Northampton. However, my understanding is that does not apply to the entertainment licenses because of zoning. Is that a correct understanding, Annie, from what attorney Seawald had explained? Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Um, and the noise ordinance parameters for zoning purposes were set by the building department. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, moving forward, I think. Well, usually it's the planning department that sets the zoning code. Okay. I mean, they work, they work closely. And Helen, had you said that East Hampton was working on something or I think they're looking into it I haven't um, followed up to find out if they and I think that also is at the city council level as I understand it um, so we, so yeah so uh, you know and I think we've asked several times sort of what are the steps then for us to do something similar because as you're pointing out to just say use our best judgment is not adequate um, and I know that even in these cases like in Florence there's a lot of people saying I'm out there with my you know, decibel reader and what decibel should I measure to when we have no answer for that? Unless we use as a guide this noise ordinance, which does say for business, it's 65, you know. Um, and from what I've heard, that's not necessarily a perfect measure. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know if what 
we need to figure out is what is this process like you're getting at Natasha? Is it something that we make a rec we bring in experts, we make a recommendation, and then that's something that then goes to the city council to get codified um, and then comes back to us. I'm not, and how quickly can all that be done? Because obviously um, people are asking now about licenses for next year. Um, so so I guess I'm, I, that's a series of questions, I guess I don't have the answer to it. I mean, I can say like, for example, you uh, showed us what they did in Montague and it seems very detailed and it looks like they must have done some uh, study to figure out because they have specifics about decibel levels. Um, I'd love to say, and we're gonna do that too, um, but I would like to have some basis for doing that because, and, and it does make it very simple. It talks about at the lot line, if it exceeds this decibel level, then you violated um, the license. Uh, it would be lovely if we could do something like that because we have people in town who can make those measurements. So, but I just don't know the steps to get there. Um. I guess I wouldn't worry so much about the steps to get there right now. Um, yeah. Um, How, where do we start though? Well, I, I mean, my suggestion would, you'd have to determine what you wanted to see in a policy like this. It's kind of mm -hmm. like how we adopted the uh, public comment policy. Okay. And then we, you'd work with, or or I would work with the city solicitor to draft something. And then I, I don't know if it rises to the level of needing city council approval. That's something obviously I can find out. Okay. So that seems doable that we could we could put together some some parameters, at least based on seeing how other communities have it laid out. It's helpful to see um, the directions it went in, like Montague has their very specific parameters, and then Essex goes so far as to talk about limiting outdoor entertainment to unamplified acoustic music in the best interest of residents, things like that. So we can, it seems um, from the examples that you've given us, Annie, there's a lot of, of, of uh, there's a lot of room and a lot of information to borrow, to build on for us. I'm not super comfortable with um, setting, you know, a noise. I'm not comfortable at all with setting a decibel amount. I have no, you know, who, who knows how to do that? It seems like the, how, wherever the noise ordinance came from, for the building department or the planning department should be the people who should be setting the same for all noise ordinances. Right. So I wanna do constructive work to try and move this forward with, the, with knowing that an outcome is going to result, I think it's important to have a, a decibel because that's, that's a point that's not arbitrary. Nobody can question whether or not that is legitimate or fair if somebody has established what that is. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that this license commission should be establishing the decibel for noise and sound. I agree. I agree. I agree that like this commission meaning you and I shouldn't sit here and just make up a decibel level, <laughs> which is essentially what you're saying. Um, and so, yeah, so then it's back to what is the next steps? Is it bringing in um, the people who are measuring this in town, um, you know, or or who made this ordinance or is it consulting with the people in Montague and finding out how they did it? And then who's doing that and when are they doing that? Um, those are the questions I still have. Yeah. You know, um, and is it just about once again, talking to the city solicitor and saying, yes, we want to pursue something. Who's, who, who does that? Who does this pursuing? Is it Natasha making phone calls? I, I, I guess I just don't understand what the process is. Yeah. Your thoughts, Annie? I see you unmuted yourself, so I know you're about to talk. <laughs> um. Um, I don't, I don't have any thoughts. Okay. Then 
I think my recommendation would be that the city solicitor come to our next meeting and we come up with a plan. I mean, I don't know what, what other city representative to start with. Because it's no longer a question of how should we handle this? I think we have the answer that we have to have some sort of decibel limit set to use as a guide for when there's complaints. And if it's not Alan, then is it the the sealer of weights and measures? Yeah. So do we ask John Frey to come and talk to us about it? Um, you know, I mean, but then I don't know if that's appropriate for him to. I mean, he can certainly give us input since he's been doing, he's been measuring these uh, other noise complaints. But ultimately, I don't know where it rests. It lies with the license commission. If you're, if you want to set regulations for your, the licenses that you issue, then it would fall on the license commission. So then I guess that's it. I mean, I guess we ask at the next meeting for people in this field who have some kind of information about it to share that information with us. And then we, we can make a decision based on what they tell us and they can either submit something in writing if they can't be there. I mean, we need to, I guess, put together a list of who these people are or they so, can. So it, are the, are the things that they've put into effect, not, that's not sufficient? Um, Cause I, I kind of feel like that is, that's what they came up with. So, so what you're saying is we could say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Annie, but we could say, we're just going to adopt that noise ordinance and we're just going to apply it to music, to outdoor entertainment. Is that, is that what I, you mean? I mean, in, I think yeah. in some way or another, that's how you'll arrive at some guidelines is to look at other places, what they've done. I mean, that's kind of how cities and towns do a lot of their things is they look at what other cities and towns are doing and then they adopt some some portion or all of the regulations, obviously with guidance from the city solicitor. Um, but I, I guess I don't know the benefit of having someone come and tell us what what they came up with when, I mean, we have what they came up with. I, th I think we, I don't, is that what you meant, Helen? I think you meant. And I guess, I guess, I'm saying, well, so for example, I mean, I just last night and today have, have looked at this stuff that you've found for us, Annie, which has been helpful. And part of me looks at what they did in Montague and says, oh, that looks really reasonable. Let's just adopt that. But I would like first, I guess, and, and if that's, or if we look at that model and we say, oh, it looks like they put a lot of thought into that and there's a reason they did that. I would like at least to reach out to someone there and say, how did you make these, you know, decisions? What, and it, this was in 2016. What have the results been? How has this worked out for you? You know, just before uh, otherwise it, well, less than, it feels less than arbitrary, but it's somewhat arbitrary just to, to sort of pick one and say, we're gonna apply that. Cause I'd like to know how it actually has worked in, in reality because outside of you know our meetings i did have a discussion with john frey and it did sound like those decibel readings it's they're not perfect i mean they're they're, they're per you can get the decibel reading but it's not perfect in um actually establishing how far you can hear something you know depending on what that something is i don't know there's sort of like variables involved um in it so if we're going to make something hard and fast, I at least I, I, I just want some support and some basis for it besides just saying this is what they did. It looks good. Yeah. Um, I'd like to hear from so I am not someone who has experience going out with a reader and hearing what it sounds like when when it's 65 decibels. Right. And then do we have the authority to say if we adopt something like that, that the sealer of weights and measures, if there's a complaint, has to go out on a Friday night to wherever and yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think what it does is 
that. I mean, I think I would love to be at the point where we say, well, this is what it is, because then it is. And that's what happens with these noise complaints is that there's a complaint and then he leaves dinner <laughs> and he goes down there and he measures it to, to see if it's in violation. And that's what would end up happening with, with all of these with all of this outdoor entertainment. And of course, you know, the what motivates it is a complaint. If we're in a situation where there are no complaints, then then no one's going to check and it doesn't matter where the decibels are. Um, but as we know, it is likely there will be a complaint at some point. Um, so, and then it, yeah, makes it not arbitrary. Right. And not a he said, she said, she said, he said um, situation. So Annie, do, so if we have the authority to set the regulations, do we have the authority to include what a city employee has? No, that's where I was gonna go with that. I don't, I don't, that goes into kind of like an executive level decision because now we're talking about staffing. Um, so that, and I, I believe if that would have to be an ordinance. Yep. Um, so I think that goes into something deeper, but I, I don't, I mean, these are all things that I can find out. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to, we need to know that. I mean, we can, you know, over the course of the next month, Helen and I can individually work on, you know, the regulations that seem to make sense. And you can always call, I mean, you can, you don't have to wait for anybody else. Yeah. You can call Montague. I mean, we have people from, boards and committees all over mass calling the mayor's office. Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. Helen, would you be, I mean, I'm up for some homework over the next month. Would that be something that we could, we can't work on it together, but we could right. be doing independently? Um, yeah, I think that'd be good. I mean, you've Annie given us a starting point with giving us this information from other towns. So yeah, absolutely. We could follow up on that. And Annie, would that be, that is something that Helen and I, we have to do separately, or would it be a meeting violation if we did it together? Right. Okay. Um, and in terms of reporting our results, is it this, that we then would email you and then you'd share that? Is that how um, as, as long as it's just factual information and you're not giving your opinion or deliberating in any way, then I mean, it depends <laughs> on the content of the email, but. Yep. Um, and then if, I mean, if not, I can share it at the next meeting. Okay. Okay, but um, sorry, but so still though, the first email should go to you. I mean, is that how the- Yeah, I mean, you guys, you yeah. can't be emailing back and forth. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so does that seem reasonable to you, Helen, that we do that for this item for discussion and hopefully some sort of resolution at the next meeting? Yes, I think so. Can I ask, um, just to make it work, can can we, are we allowed to talk to each other? I mean, do we have to decide now, like, I'm calling Mont Montague, I'm talking to John Frey, or can, is that something that we can work out? Um, I mean, you can tell me what you're doing. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's a fine line. You probably would be able to talk to each other, like scheduling of who's going to call what, um, I would just, you just have to be careful. Okay. For the, as a matter of record, should we do that via emails and CC you on it? So you're aware of the communication. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Emails, <laughs> if you're both on the email, I mean, it depends on what you're saying. If you're saying, I'm going to call this person, this person, this person, this person, and then you say, okay, I'm going to call this person. I don't, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, did either of you have any other thoughts about this before we move on? No, just that, yeah, it'll be great to have some kind of resolution. So I'm yeah. hoping that we can pursue this in the next month and- Yeah, no, it's- Solutions, yeah. As we see from other communities from the research that Annie did, it's doable. Mm -hmm. okay, it's just a matter of doing it, doing it right and doing it once. <laughs> right. Okay. Measure twice, cut once. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> That's right. 
Okay. Um, so Sorry, Natasha, before we move on, I just want to yep. note that O'Brien is present. I see him. I was just going to suggest we do that one quickly. So before we move on. Perfect. Okay, great. So moving backwards then to item number six, application for short-term liquor licenses, building a brewery for Florence Congregational Church, 130 Pine Street, wine and malt on November 6th and 7th from 6 to 9 p.m. And to November, November 18th from 6.30 to 11. O'Brien, you're up. And you're on mute. How's that? That's much better. Sorry, my dog just got out and uh, I apologize for missing the meeting. I uh, was been in quarantine since this morning um, when I found out I was negative, somebody I was with, so I've had a, everything crammed into one day today. But yeah, we're real excited about all the Bombic stuff and uh, it's gonna be uh, us and Artifact kind of side by side. And uh, we're, we're got a nice room there we can serve in separate from where the performance is. And I guess that's it, you know, um, you know, um, everybody's qualified to serve. I don't really, honestly, they want us to do half pints and pints. I don't think people are going to be too much. There's no bar area. It's just like we're serving in like a meeting room in the church. So pretty straightforward. Okay. And you'll be exercising your usual standards when you do a remote pouring event. Oh yeah. Yep, uh, we've got signage and everything with alcohol percentage. People are staying in the room. We're actually right next to the bathrooms. I've got 10 ounce cups and 16 ounce cups. And we are, you know, going to do everything according to plan. Ah, sorry, my dog's back. <laughs> um, well, I, don't, I don't have any questions. See you, Helen? No. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, do you want me to, I'll make a motion to approve the application for short term liquor licenses for building eight brewing. Um, as detailed in item six of the agenda. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, moving back then to agenda item 10, request by Blue, Co Blue Paws Incorporated DBA JJ's Tavern, 99 Main Street, Florence for a modification to existing entertainment license to include live amplified music one night per week, week being Sunday through Saturday and music performance not to exceed three performers at one time. And hi, John, are you here Hello. somewhere? Oh, there you are, hi, how are you? Great. Can you just state your name for the record? Jonathan Newman. Great. And um, you want to talk a little bit about why you're here today? Well, I'm a little bit backwards now because I, when I applied for this, I didn't realize that item 11 or 10 or whatever was on the agenda when I applied for it. So now I'm kind of stuck. And uh, but the original intent was to, you know, to revisit the outdoor entertainment uh music to be outside next summer uh going to one night a week instead of the two that i had and you know when i say amplified it means nothing more than you know a guy in an acoustic guitar or a duo act now amplified i use that in the, in the email because not to insinuate it being a band but that was the word acoustic seemed to be a word that was really misconstrued mm -hmm. last time right yep. um and just to go along you know i submitted that um petition you know showing support of people on the same street um of their support for it and non you know wasn't invasive to their lives so it, um and as well uh you know that we tried the acoustic unplugged completely and it just it physically does not work uh every every act but one backed out and said you know we can't do it and you know we just want to you know, we think one night is fair. We're at, that's, that's a compromise. We're still trying to compromise. We're not getting any other compromise and from anybody else. You know, it's just zero shutdown. And that's not what we're, we're trying to do. I mean, we went from two nights, or, and, uh, seven nights to two nights to to one night unamplified. We're taking all the cuts, but we're not getting anything on the other end. So we think one night a week, um, you know, and when I said the, 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 the Sunday through Saturday, just because I think Helen brought up last time, what's, what's a week? So there's no backdooring the end of one week and the start of another on a weekend right so that's what that meant um but now i'm kind of stuck because you know i feel like you guys are doing the right thing and going for the decibel having something concrete which 
I'm uh, pretty confident that we're not going to exceed anything. Like I know, I know I was the only one in this whole scene that had a decibel reader and I know what the numbers were. And, you know, I think it's the right thing to do as far as getting some kind of concrete number so we can use, right? I mean, and, and not an arbitrary just hearsay or somebody's opinion. If somebody's having a bad day, they think music's too loud. They're having a good day, it's not too loud. You know, it's um, it just, it's fair. I think it's well, one night um, for, you know, two and a half, three hours, or whatever it was on the license there. Um, I just think it's, I'm just coming back to try to get this revisited. Um, not knowing, of course, that was on the agenda when I wrote the email, but so that kind of, puts us in a weird spot but okay well it it is the impetus for us making sure that we have everything sorted out so that it's fair to all parties i mean it's business should be able to have conduct their business in creative ways and neighbors should be able to not be irritated by it all the time so i think that mm -hmm. there's there's a way to make it happen and having some guidance that we can provide through regulations will go a long way to that end. I agree. I hope. Helen, do you have something? Yeah, I'm just curious. When you say um, that when you went to acoustic, it just physically did not work. What what does that mean? Are you so, saying? So a, a guy sitting there playing his guitar, you know, he the, the voice couldn't carry over people talking. So basically he was playing to himself, you know, to the corner of the room and you couldn't hear himself over, you know what I mean? The ambient noise, the ambient noise just was drowning him out. And a lot of these guys sing softly through an amplified microphone to increase the level of just their voice going out instead of having to overpower and yell right. to get, which screws up their voices and, their, and they don't want to sing that way, right? You, the, the point of a microphone is to sing, talk or whatever at a normal voice level that it gets out to the crowd that you're playing for, right? And um, we have a very, you know, small, small system that's meant, meant for something super small like this particular uh, um venue right this this is the outdoor space so it's it's a it's it's one speaker it's one guy you know um you know and i, and I the reason i wrote the, the three people on there is because i didn't want to make it seem like we're having rock bands on there because we're not having rock bands on. i don't have any bands on there it's just i wanted to make sure that you know sometimes it's a guy playing guitar and his partner is singing so that's a duo up there right but she's not playing guitar she's just singing he's just playing the guitar so i wanted to make sure i didn't get handcuffed with any i wanted to leave room to you know i i know what I need to do. You know what I mean, I know what you don't want to have. And I, I'm not going to be stupid and try to violate that or push the envelope. I get it. But there's a certain level of fairness that that I should be able to have something out there. Um, and I think one night a week, you know, uh, with a guy playing there is not the, the end of the world by any means. Uh, that's, that's all I was trying to say. And um, it does take time to plan these things, you know, and I think if the commission takes, you know, time to come up with some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of strategy for decibel readings or other guidelines that's great and so be it you know we have five six months till you know things get going outside again right so um i'm all for the wait it just i i don't want to have to kind of go backwards then if you adapt and then i'm kind of stuck with a negative you know my license being not being able to be used or whatever or if i have my license you know and i have to change it because you have guidelines I just kind of want to get get it out in the open now, you know. And we don't want that either. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, that's. Um, so I mean, I think it's fair to say we're not going to amend a license today because we have have a plan to to button this up. Is that right. is that reasonable, Helen? Do you would you agree with that? Yes, I do agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I have one question for you, John. Can you remind me? Did you because your location is unique and it's not unique because it has residential neighbors it's unique because of all of the brick walls around it yep. and i think that sound bounces in a way that hasn't necessarily been anticipated and that's part of the problem did did you in in your research with decibels and everything else did you ever have anybody a sound person come and sort of assess that situation because i know you did move the stage at one point so that it wasn't facing out Correct. Okay. So was did you ever have anybody come to look at that, or were you just trying to do do it based on logic? No. Well, that well, logic was a big part of it. That was the next step if we we're going to take this thing to to court. I mean, um, you know, but I just feel like, you know, the board of the city putting the screws on me to spend that kind of money when they should spend that kind of money, not me. You know, trying to trying to get the levels figured out or who's going to you know 
some professional, what if the guy you don't like his opinion or somebody doesn't like his opinion as to what it is, you know, it's, it's, it's hearsay again. I mean, um, so no, I didn't have anybody professionally come out, uh, but we know from our reader that it, it definitely went down eight points. I mean, which is a lot, you know, we're talking, you know, 65 or 62 to 54, which that's pretty low. I mean, um, and so, yeah, going straight out definitely was louder. Turning it was definitely softer. And that was a good decision on whoever made that uh, observation. And we felt it worked. Um, and we never pushed the envelope any farther than that. We kept everything there. We kept the guy in the corner. Um, could we make other adjustments with boxing the person in with more sound, you know, acoustic stuff? You know, sure. But having a number to use would uh, either help us get there or say we don't need to get there because we're already there, you know? All right. Um, I don't have anything else on this item then because we have we have our homework to do for the next meeting. Are you all set, Helen? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Annie, did you have anything? Okay, great. So what will become of, of so your findings, whether it takes a next month's meeting or the one after, you know, if you ad adopt something um, and it's, you know, it's concrete, it's, it's, a, it's a number, you say, okay, anybody with an entertainment license has to buy this same decibel. We think this reader is, you know, on Amazon for hundred bucks. If you want an entertainment license outside, you got to use this reader because everyone's the same, right? That makes sense. And, you know, you had that number. What's my, I guess Annie's question for Annie. What would be my like uh, recourse at that point? Do I have to re, so I'm, I'm stuck with this license now and I have to re reapply for an alteration based on the new regulations or would I just be, subject to the new regulations because it's blanketed for entertainment licenses? Um, well, I guess it depends on what what they what the commission comes up with. Um, but uh, I mean, there's no decibel number on your license. So I, I mean, that would only come if there was a complaint. Um, but I mean, I guess it depends on what they come up with. Um, I mean, you didn't really have to apply for this. It's not like there's a lot of legwork in the requesting a modification. Right. So I, I guess it depends what they come up with and then we'd have to go from there. So, um, Annie, don't the entertainment licenses like the other ones sort of re-up at the beginning of every year? Yeah, they're, they're being renewed right now. Well, I mean, yeah. all the renewal stuff went out. Okay. That was so, my other question, Helen, the same, same exact thing, because I got to pay up next month for, for all my licenses. And that's one of them. So my license goes into 2022 saying I can have one night a week unplugged for two and a half hours, whatever that is. And then you guys make an amendment to the, to the, how the policy is. Do I then have to re go in front of the board to ask to be, I guess, amplified so I can get to that decibel level or whatever that whatever it is like that's what i'm that's what i'm asking like so your to... license your well it's actually just it's due this month i know oh, okay okay you said next month i just want to watch it's not okay um so you, you'll be renewing the, the the 2021 license for 2022 and what is on it your license right now will be what's on your 2022 license okay so for any changes yeah you'd have to come to the commission okay so you'll just let me know then at one point if you guys make a change to if they make a change to the um yeah whether, I, whether it's December, January, February, whatever something comes, you know, you'll let me know so I can then if something gets yes, when something yeah. gets put into place, I will definitely let you know. Yeah, I think it and, and you get emails, John, when the yeah. agenda's posted every month. So yeah. um yeah, but yes, I will let you know. Okay. And I think once we establish something in whatever method gets it approved, that if all the license holders could be sent the update. So everybody. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Can... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I think, um, I don't think there's anything else to discuss with that. Okay. Sounds right good. Now. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Thank you. Item 11 um, Discuss next steps for the all alcohol liquor license held by RIAS. Bashas LLC, DBA, Ibiza Tapas. Um, so we don't have more information from Attorney Seawald or we do? 
Um, well, we do. I mean, I know at le the last meeting you had asked kind of what the process was, and yep. the process is literally just um, a visa tap us surrendering their license, and yep. then once they surrender it, they can, at that moment, they can apply for it under Homestead. Yep. Um, so that's, I mean, that's really it. Okay. And the process was like a 30 day turnaround. Is that? It, it, it depends. Um, it depends on how long the ABCC takes. It depends on when they surrender and when the next commission meeting is. So I suggest probably picking a date and I can send them a letter and let them know what you've decided. <clears throat> okay. Um, I would think a, a January first or, or second, or second when there's business, <laughs> whatever day of the week that January is. January third. third is the first um, Monday business day in the month. Okay. Yeah. So January third. Yeah, I think January third. Okay. Then he has time to prepare for the process on his end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we don't need to vote on that, right? No. Okay. Item number 12, approval of October 6, 2021 minutes. Should I, I read them. Should I just go ahead and make a motion? Go for it. For a motion to approve. Minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And was there any other new business besides that uh, Academy of Music item? No, oh, just renewals are, are happening now. I sent out all the paperwork. They're due on the 24th, I think, um, uh, for liquor. This is liquor. Yeah. Um, so I will will do re uh, renewals in, at the December meeting. Okay. Great, I have nothing else, Helen. Do you have any new business? I do not. All right, then I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. And Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Have a great evening.